Hi all, I am Professor Collins and this is the Excel Workshop. Um, so today in the Excel Workshop we will be doing um, going over paired sample t-test. Uh, this is also known as the related sample t-test. Um, and so uh, the objectives here are to go over the paired sample t-test. So let's talk about um, the use of the paired sample t-test real quick. There's two conditions under which you'd want to use the paired sample t-test. The first condition is when you're testing differences over time, right? And so the typical example here is, um, say you're being diagnosed for something like uh, depression, for example, and um, you're tested prior to going into treatment. Um, on, a, on a depression scale, um, a continuous depression scale, um, and you have your measurement there, and then you're uh, treated, and then you're tested again, right? And so you can compare the differences across those two time periods um, to ask the question of does treatment help, right, decrease your depression. Another example here is <clears throat> testing differences in means across pairs of people. Right, so people who are paired together. And so there's a lot of complex ways to do this. Um, one of the most standard ways is comparing something like um, partnership um, enjoyment, right? Part or, um, relationship happiness, right, among two romantic partners, um, and asking the question: Is there significant differences um, in romantic partners um, in terms of partnership happiness, right? Some something like that. Um, so that you have two different people, in this case, um, who are paired together on some sort of characterization, right? They're in a relationship together, um, they're siblings, something like that. And so the steps here are, are the steps that you will see for all t-tests. Um, so we have the assumptions, random sampling, um, the dependent variable is continuous, <laughs> and the distribution is normal. We need to state our null and research hypotheses, establish our critical region, and uh, compute the test statistic and interpret our results. And so we'll turn now to the raw data um, and we'll go through those processes. Okay, <clears throat> now let's take a look at our raw data here. And so um, in this case, what we're doing is we're going to look at the paired sample um, test over two time periods. Um, so for this question, uh, or for this analysis, our research question is going to be, has Marshawn Lynch gotten better since his rookie year? Um, so to give those those of you who are not um, football uh, aficionados uh, some background, Marshawn Lynch is a running back in the National Football League for the Seattle Seahawks. Um, and uh, what we're doing is we're measuring his rushing yards across two time periods. So we're measuring his rushing yards from his rookie year to the current time period of 2004 and asking the question, has he gotten better since his rookie year? Right? And his rookie year was 2007. <clears throat> and so um, let's go through the steps here. So step number one, of course, um, these are standards, uh, random sampling, DV is continuous, right? So rushing yards is, is a continuous variable. Um, distribution is normal. Now let's state the Nolan research hypotheses. Um, so, so these are based on our research question, as will our critical region. Um, our null hypothesis is his rookie year is greater than or equal to 2014 year, right? Because we're looking at whether he's gotten better over the two years. Um, so our null hypothesis is the opposite of that. Our research hypothesis is connected to our research question, right? So um, we're hypothesizing here that his rookie year is less than um, the 2014 year, or that his 2014 year he'll have more um, yards on average um, than his rookie year. Um, so we establish our critical region here. So the nice thing about Excel is it actually will give us all of these numbers. The main thing that we need to look for is this one-tailed test. Um, because one-tailed means it's directional, two-tailed means it's not directional, right? So when we have a directional hypothesis, we're stating that one time period is, is greater than or less than another time period. Um, if it's non-directional, we're not stating one is better, um, one is greater or less than, we're just stating they're different from one another, but not hypothesizing the direction. 
And now we need to compute our test statistic and interpret our results. Um, so the way we're going to do this is we're going to open up our data um, tab up here uh, in, our, in our little uh, window. We're going to go to data analysis. And then we're going to scroll down to the bottom and click on t-test paired to sample for means. Click OK. And we're going to highlight our first variable, variable one range. So this is the first time period. Right? And so we can go ahead and do that. Our variable two, we need to get the range for that, which is this here. You want to make sure this labels is clicked. Um, the labels is the, the first row here. And we'll put a new worksheet, um, and we'll just call this we'll call this results. And then we can click OK, and you'll be ready to go. And here are our results. So it just pops up real quick. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back here and steal these two um, so we have something to compare to. Um, so I'm, I'll plug these in here. Actually, let's make this a little bit bigger. So you can see the results. Bring this over. Um, actually, let's make these a little bit smaller. So it's a little easier to read here. All right. So what we have is we have our, now we have our test statistic and we have the rest of the data that we need, right? Um, so as you can see here, let me just move this stuff out of the way. What you can see here is that we have this information right here, right? So we have a one-tailed test, which is this right here. Um, it's identifying our one-tailed test and it's telling us our um, critical region, right? Which is this right here. So same thing here. Um, these two, because it's not a two-tailed test, we don't need. So I'm actually just going to black these out so we don't get confused. Um, so the data we're looking at is really this data right here. And so what we're doing is we're comparing our test statistic, which is this here. Um, so we can identify that. T, T statistic equals negative 0. 86. And we're comparing that t-statistic, that test statistic, to our critical region, right? And if, in absolute terms, if the test statistic is greater than the critical region, then we will uh, reject the null hypothesis. Um, so in essence, if 0.86 is greater than 1.75, we'll reject the null hypothesis, or in other words, we'll accept the research hypothesis, right? Um, and that is not that is clearly not the case. Another way to tell so we so in this case we're rejecting the the research hypothesis right so we're not accepting the research hypothesis here. Another way to tell is um, we have this little number here and this is our p value. So this is essentially the alpha level of our test right. Um, and so if this is less than 0.05 what we set our alpha level at, then we can reject the null hypothesis and accept the research hypothesis. However, this is not, right? This 0 0.20 is greater than um, 0 0.05, and so we cannot accept the research hypothesis. So what we're going to do, we're going to So our decision is to reject the research hypothesis, and our interpretation, we will write something like a paired sample t revealed that Marshawn Lynch did not run for for more yards in 2014 compared to his rookie year. Right, so something like that. Right, so we're and we're identifying here that um, Marshawn Lynch did not run for more yards um, than in his rookie year.
Um, so those those are the pieces of information you need. Um, so it's a lot to talk about just these three little numbers here. Um, so let's go back and just double check. We, we've worked on everything. Um, so we've stayed, interpreted our results, computed the, our statistic, our test statistic, and that's the two main purposes of this. Um, so this has been the Excel workshop on the paired sample t-test. Thanks for watching.